It is now a post season 5 world and a lot has changed since the last video I did discussing the show. As always beware of spoilers and if you haven't seen the finale yet, I suggest you never do and live in a world of denial is probably better. I know it's been a while since I released any content, basically I've been reeling over the finale and I thought I should give myself a bit more time to compose and create this discussion. I want to primarily talk about the death of Jon Snow and its build up. I was pretty bitter at Ollie and Sir Alistair in particular after they set up the murder, but over the past week I've considered things differently and I've asked myself, what if I were in their shoes? Well first let's talk Ollie. He's aged about 12 to 14 and he came to the wall under pretty horrific circumstances. He witnessed the murder of his family and villagers at the hands of some of the most barbaric wildlings and was then forced to flee to the wall. Here he entered a culture of honourable fighters who have known nothing but combating the very men that led him to this situation. So you can imagine how impressionable he was and how easily he followed the belief that those beyond the wall are bad people. The men surrounding and shaping who Ollie becomes have all fought these wildlings. I'm very sure that somewhere in the lead up to the finale, Ollie has sat around with his fellow soldiers and told the story of how he got to the wall. All the while, these men encourage him and give him comfort that one day he will be able to exact revenge for the loss of his family. Then John's plan comes to light. He is once again named a wildling sympathizer and Ollie, who seems to look up to John and respect him as Lord Commander, is torn. This figure is helping the people he despises the most, and the other Night's Watchmen all begin discussing their dislike for the new Lord Commander. Despite Ollie giving it his best to understand why John is helping the wildlings, he witnesses them travel through the gate and that seems to be the last straw. I can hardly blame Ollie for getting on board with the mutiny. Being so young and very fragile, killing the Lord Commander would seem like the right thing to do. Over to Sir Alistair Thorne, a veteran of the Night's Watch who came a close second to Jon Snow in the race for the Lord Commander title. He joined the Night's Watch after Robert Baratheon sacked King's Landing, which put his service in the Night's Watch at around about 20 years. During this time, he has come to know one single enemy, the Wildlings. White Walkers and magic are all tales to Alistair. He has never seen one, but has only heard stories from people who, in his eyes, are less than reputable. The relationship between Jon and Alistair Thorne has always been poor. From the day Jon arrives at the wall, Thorne clearly displays a dislike for him, and I believe this is to stem from Sir Alistair's sentence to the Night's Watch. You see, during the rebellion, he fought for the Targaryens and defended King's Landing, a rebellion started by Jon's father, Eddard Stark. After King's Landing was taken, Sir Alistair was given the choice of joining the wall or death. I think that Alistair is still bitter about the defeat and sentence, and that is reflected onto Jon. Matters were not made any better by Jon's election to Lord Commander and being named the First Ranger hardly made up for the embarrassment that Thorne has suffered. Back to the finale, Jon has allowed the Wildlings, the very men that he has fought for 20 years and witnessed kill his friends and fellow Watchmen through the gate and into the south. I imagine it would have been very easy for him to agree to planning the killing of Jon and taking the lead after his death. But this doesn't clear Ollie or Alistair of a terrible crime. What they did was still wrong, but when I look at it this way, I feel it isn't entirely their fault. So who else is at fault? I'm of the opinion that Jon Snow is as much to blame as the mutineers. He neglected the men by his side, the men he has sworn to lead and protect in favour of making a very hard decision. He really put little effort into convincing them that there is a bigger war coming and that they need these people on their side. He needed to take the influential figures of the Night's Watch and show them his side of the story. I realise that time was an issue after the White Walker invasion at Hardhome, but why could he not send Alyssa and several men on a scouting mission to Hardhome and perhaps witness the destruction and lack of dead bodies? Maybe while Alyssa is en route, he could run into some wildlings and perhaps live to tell others of what he has seen, or better yet, he and the other sceptics don't return at all. Either way, what is done is done. John is dead as far as we know and we are left with a huge cliffhanger. So what are your thoughts on this season? Is John going to return in some way or another? Do you think that there is anything else John could have done to save the mutiny? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Quick Lore. Thank <laughs> you.